mean, I'm glad I finished that first video before World War 3, but I gotta get this one done fast. While we did make a little world on bare metal hardware, if you know a thing or two, you're probably like, Um, well that was based on our new hardware, that's not bare metal, you dumb my people sh- I was gonna do this video with a raw microcontroller, but my programmer, as you can see, is... But what if we can actually get more bare metal? I'm talking, we got freedom on the hardware's design itself. <laughs> This is an FPGA. Frankly, it's my first ever one, and I got it for free. Now, how that happened, you're gonna have to subscribe and hit that bell button to find out. So go on, click it. Click it. Click it. Click it. A field programmable gate array is essentially an array of gates that are field programmable. The thing about FPGAs is that the hardware is fully customizable, which means you can make all sorts of uh, fancy calculators, shall we say. Long story short, you can get just about anything you want with these things, except women, because that is just not possible for you. FPGAs use hardware description languages. Now that does sound like a coding language, but technically, you don't write code for these. You design and describe the hardware that would do the work for you. Don't think code, think circuits. As a wise man once said, it's all about the flow of data. Also, it's data, not data. What are you, American? You sick for Quarters Prime is what Intel FPGAs use. Thank heavens there is a free version for it. Uh, installing it is alright. <laughs> the main issues would appear when trying to connect the board, which we'll get to later. Okay, don't think code, think circuits. What the f*** does that actually mean? Right, to understand this better, we need to actually break down how we make an LED blink. In our Hello World Blink computer thing, which we'll later refer to as the Blink module, essentially we have an input and then it's going to give us an output. Of course, the output is going to be the LED, but blinking an LED sounds like it wouldn't have any input on the surface, but we'll get to that later. However, just looking at our blinker code, we can easily spot that all we're doing is just repeatedly wait for a while, and then we flip the LED from on to off to on to off, off, on to... what? Computers don't really wait, but they can count, which takes some time, and we can use that time as a delay mechanism. Delay, delay, de de delay, delay. So right off the bat, we're gonna have a counter. Now this just counts, we're gonna also have a condition to know when we have counted for long enough, and then we also need to do something when that happens, and that is to flip the LED state, which then would be the output for our blink module. And we're basically done, except for the input. Now again, we're counting to measure time, but we don't really have a reference for time, and that's where our input comes in. Our input is gonna be a clock. Our clock balls, in my case, this little ball right here, we're gonna use that so we can count at a consistent rate, so then we can use it to actually measure time. And there you have it. Hopefully this cleared things out a little bit for now, but let's hop on quarters and try to implement this. A few moments later. What does this mean? 2020? This is five years old. Right, blank project. Very lock file. Starting off with module blink with LED and clock as our I.O. Then we're going to define clock as an input wire. We'll talk about this in a second. And then define LED as an output wire. And then define our counter as a 32-bit register. And our LED state as just a bit. So imagine a town where cars are data. Because remember, it's all about the flow of data. Also, it's data, not data. What are you, American? Anyway, a car is just a road. It connects stuff. We just want to get the clock signal in and LED out. We're not storing anything, but when we want to count, we need to store it. You don't fix cars on the road, you park it in a repair shop or a parking. That's a register. This is stored in memory. And as for our LED state, remember, LED is just a wire. You can't really do any operations on it, but our LED state stores the LED state. Duh. And we can use that, so when we want to blink, we flip whatever the LED state stores. We initialize the values as zero. And then always at the positive edge of our clock, we add one to our counter, aka we count. And then after it's counted two to the power of 24 times, 
which with a 50 MHz clock would be about a third of a second, we flip the LED state, and then we reset the counter. And before we forget, let's assign LED to LED state, so we can actually see it blink. Assign is just a keyword to route a wire from source to destination. And remember, this is not a script or a code, this is just describing the circuit that would do this. A mix of combinational and sequential logic. The mechanics of wits and the indecencies of the neurological... <laughs> Now we compile and ah! right after fixing the syntax errors and making sure our top level module is also named blink we have a few important warnings to address first let's actually tell quarters what pin led and clock are connected to then let's also add a synopsis design constraint file this is like a build setting in like fine tuning the fpga for every design well ours is a very pathetic one we just pick vera clock and we say we're in any nanosecond accurate timing because we're just blinking in led and i'm a pathetic one. Ignore the rest of the warnings, five warnings, you select your device, you program it, hope for the best, and there you go! Well actually, that's a load of sh**. We can half the code. So where do we start? Well... If you observe this counter counting in binary, you can notice that each bit essentially flips at its own rate. And if you look at it at a philosophical level, the bits are blinking. And so you can just assign the 24th bit to the LED, and actually that's all you have to fucking do. No need for an if statement, because resetting the counter also doesn't matter. The bit will blink, and the counter will just go back to zero when it overflows. Also, if you really look at it philosophically, you don't even need this initial block, because it's just blinking, and the starting time doesn't have to be perfect. None of it matters. None of this shit matters, bro. What the fuck are you doing blinking LEDs? You should go fucking lynch. You should end it all. End it now! <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, the outcome looks exactly the same. If you think it's a little too similar, I couldn't be bothered to film it again, but you can trust me that it looks identical. But yeah, thanks for watching all the way up to here, man. Uh, these bits for me specifically, uh, I just put down a bunch of goals on a list. Just don't be a lazy f***ing gang. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment, I'll see you in the next one, bye.